If you watched my last video, then you'll have seen me knitting these stockings and also probably having quite a close call with nearly sabotaging my own work by pulling the needle out of my stitches, which absolutely terrified me. After that moment, I was nervous not just for my own accidental sabotage of my knitting, but also anytime I put this down or traveled somewhere, there are a few instances where the needles got a little bit loose of the stitches and that made me quite nervous. I tried to find some knitting end caps that I could put on these needles, but they are so tiny that even the tiniest modern ones I could find just would not stay put. So they weren't really all that useful. However, I've been looking through some old knitting books and found these Punchinello knitting caps for knitting needles that seem to be perfectly made for this particular project and for keeping it safe at least while it's not actively in my hands. I dug through the stash of yarns that I have and I managed to find three of these silk lace yarns that I have. This one, if you watched a while back that I dyed yarns with natural woad, this is that lace yarn that I dyed and made a purse out of. And then I have two more colors of the exact same yarn. This is Knit Picks Luminance yarn, just in case you were curious. I'm using three colors because that's what the pattern suggests. So if you're curious, I'm gonna take you through all the steps of making these knitting caps right now. For this project, you're going to need two corks, a set of knitting needles, three kinds of knitting lace, and a darning needle in order to finish everything off. I also forgot to show that you need some cotton, either cotton wads or something that you can use to stuff the tip of these needle caps. I just used some cotton pads that I had and tore them up. These needle caps are knit from the top down, so the first few rounds are a little fiddly because you're working from a small point and then expanding to become larger. For the first color, I used my hand dyed woad silk, then I switched to the white, and after doing a few rows of pearl ribbing, I switched over to this I guess maybe you would call it a teal that ends up in ribbing. You finish off with one more section of white ribs or whichever colors you chose and your first needle cap is fully finished. This is a nice and quick project and after finishing my first needle cap, I sat down, watched a show and really worked on getting the second needle cap finished. Now that I have both needle caps mostly done, it is time to assemble them. The first thing that you want to do is take your cotton. For me, like I said, I just used these cotton pads, so I had to kind of tear them up a little bit to get them fluffier to stuff the tip of these needle caps. This is exactly what the directions in said in order to create like a nice little point above where the corks go. You can also leave this empty, but it does leave it a little bit floppy. Then you wanna insert your wine cork in and kind of fasten the ends over it. You don't wanna completely cover the end of your wine cork because that's where you'll be sticking your needles. I used one true cork wine cork and the other one I believe is a plastic kind and the real cork works much better. So if you can, I would recommend finding real cork for these needle caps. I thought the finishing details on these needle caps are super cute, so I've also followed the directions to add some pom-poms to the top. I made it a mix of the three colors that I used for knitting the needle caps, and I thought it turned out super cute. I made two matching ones and then trimmed and cut around the top of the pom-poms to make them look nice and fluffy after I sewed them to the top of my needle caps. I really like the suggestion in the pattern to make a braided cord out of your three different colors of your yarn. I'm sensing a bit of a theme here with the th using the three different colors together. They used much more bright colors. I think there was, was a blue, a yellow, and a red. And this braided cord is used to attach the needle caps to each other so that when you're not using them, they're attached quite nicely. I wanted to see how these worked on some of the smallest needles that I own. These needles are pretty bendable and flexible, so I was afraid that they would bend out of shape, but as long as I used it pretty delicately, I found that these held their place really, really well, and I could then transport my knitting holding on to that braided cord. And trying them out on my stockings, they were absolutely perfect. They held really well on the ends of my needles, and I found that the more I used the needle caps, the better they got because I poked a few more holes into the cork, and it made me be able to poke them deeper in each time, which made the knitting even more secure on my needle caps. 
I'm really pleased with how these needle caps turned out. I feel like this is one of those projects where my finished result turned out really, really close to the picture that I'm going off of for the pattern. And that always makes me really, really happy. This is another one of those knitted cabinet of curiosities project that is particularly useful. If you watched my stocking video, you might've noticed me taking off these needle caps from my knitting before I started working on it. I used these constantly when I was working on my stockings and it made it so much more secure when I was transporting my knitting around. I really, really like them. Thank you again so much for watching. Feel free to subscribe if you like to watch historical crafting content. And if you guessed correctly in my last video, I'm wearing my wrapper here in this scene. So stay tuned and I will see you again next time when I show you the finished wrapper.